160, the subject is Aeneas, Aeneas, and then this word contra here, we've seen that word quite a lot, contra plus accusative, meaning against, but here it's not really going with an accusative, it just is contrasting what Aeneas is doing with what we heard Turnus doing in the previous line. So you can translate it as something like in turn or on the other hand. So Aeneas in turn, minator, threatens. Right, so this is the third person singular present tense from a deponent verb, minor, minari, minator, sunt, threaten. So Aeneas threatens death, mortem. In other words, he's looking like he's about to cause mortem. And also he threatens praesens exitium. So praesens means present or imminent, something about to happen or instant. And then exitium means destruction or doom. So Aeneas, in turn, threatens death and instant doom or destruction. And he does this si quisquam adeat. So si means if, quisquam means anyone, and adeat means approaches. And that's present subjunctive from ad eo, ad ire, to approach. So, and it's subjunctive because... The idea is any time, it's a kind of general phrase, like any time someone approaches, this is what he does. And que, he terrifies, terret, the trementis. Now, trementis is a poetic form. In prose, it would be trementes. And it's a participle uh, that's being used as a noun. So literally, it means trembling, accusative plural. But in this case, we could say the trembling people or the trembling men. Um, and here we have um, another part of this ball. So he terrifies the trembling men, threatening. So here we have a verb minitare, which has the same meaning as minari that we saw in line 760. So threatening um, to excusorum, to raise, R-A-Z-E, to destroy the city, urbem. So excusorum, this is an example of Virgil being very concise with his language. So technically this should be threatening, minitans, that he, say, would raise excusorum esse, the city, urbem, because this is an indirect statement. So it's accusative and infinitive. But what Virgil's done is he's removed the accusative, say, and he's also removed the esse, he's removed half of the infinitive as well. So threatening to raise the city, not raise in the sense of lift up, R-A-I-S-E, but raise in the sense of destroy, R-A-Z-E. So threatening to raise the city and, that's et, he presses on in stat, wounded, saucius. So you could say something like, although he is wounded, but Latin, the Latin again is very concise. Virgil just says, wounded, he presses on. And then in the next line, in 763, the, the main verb is explent. Now expleo, explere, means to fill up. It's a verb that you could use of filling up a, a bottle or a jug or something like that. So literally, they fill up five circles, quinque orbis. And again, this is a poetic form. In prose, it would be orbes. So literally, they fill up five circles. In other words, in their running, they run full, uh, sorry, they run five complete circles. So they fill up five circles with their running, cursu, or in their running, ablative case. And, quer, they retexunt. Now, texo is to, uh, is to weave something, and retexo is to weave back, or weave again, or unweave. So they unweave totidem. Now, totidem means the same number, or just as many. So they unweave just as many to here, uk, and to there, iluk. So... So they're going round and round in circles, and then they are 
undoing the circles. So it's like they're running, you know, clockwise in circles five times and then anti-clockwise in circles five times. So Virgil is just emphasising how they're running lots all over the place, this way and that way, hook, hilook. And then uh, in the next phrase, enim means four, um, and then the subject is levia primia. Now levis means light in the sense of not heavy, but it can also mean light in the sense of not important. Uh, and it's going with primia. So unimportant rewards, levia primia, or ludicra primia. Now ludicra, uh, it gives us the English word ludicrous, but it actually means, it's an adjective that means relating to sports competitions. Um, and then the main verb is petuntur, which is passive, third person plural. So it means are being sought. So if you put that together, what Virgil is saying is four um, unimportant prizes or sports prizes, prizes for sporting events, are not being sought. In other words, Virgil is saying this isn't a game. Right? This is, they're not competing for some silly prize. They're not competing in the Olympics or in a sports competition. But say, and this is where the contrast comes in, with, sorry, with said in line 765, they are kertant, they are striving, they are competing, de vita, about, or in English we would say competing for, the life, vita, and the blood, sanguine, of turnus. So turni is genitive, whereas vita and sanguine are ablative after de. So, in other words, the prize in this competition, this race, is not a trivial prize. It's not a laurel wreath at the Olympic Games or something. The prize is whether Turnus lives or dies. That's the, that's the point that Virgil's making there. And then in line 766, the narrative moves on a bit. Forte. So forte means by chance. It just so happened that. So you can tell from that word that Virgil is moving the narrative on. So by chance, an oleaster. Now oleaster means a wild olive tree. So an oleaster, um, which is described as sacer fauna, which means sacred to faunus. So sacer, sacred, faunus is dative singular, meaning to faunus, who is uh, a god. So by chance, a wild olive tree, sacred to faunus, with bitter leaves. So amaris is bitter and folies means leaves. Right, so and both of those words are ablative because it means with bitter leaves. Heek steterat. Now heek means here. Because uh, remember heek with a long eye means here, whereas hick with a short eye means this. Um, and steterat is a pluperfect tense verb. It comes from sto stare, to stand. The perfect is steti, and so that gives us the pluperfect steterat. So by chance, a wild olive tree, sacred to faunus, with bitter leaves, had stood here, hic steterat. Um, and then we get a bit more description of the tree. It says... Um, a tree, lignum, or a, a wooden, literally a wooden thing, but a tree, um, venerabile, which means revered, uh, or venerable, uh, revered, olim. Now, olim can mean once upon a time, but in this case, I don't think it's implying that the worship or the reverence has stopped. Uh, it's just expressing that it's been happening for a very long time. So you could translate olim as something like of old or from early times. So a tree revered of old or from early times by sailors, nautis. Now in prose that should be ar nautis, but Virgil has left out the word ar. So nautis on its own here means by sailors. And then ubi means where, where, and then servati is a ppp agreeing 
or referring back to the sailors. So have, where having been saved out of the waves, ex undis, ex plus ablative, out of the waves, they were accustomed, solebat, imperfect tense, and again this is referring back to the sailors, having been saved from the waves, they were accustomed to fix, figere, or to fasten, gifts, dona, to the god, devo, so this is like, um, in, in Latin the noun deus is a god, but divus is another way of saying that, it's a word that means the same thing, uh, to the god of laurentum, so laurenti is the genitive of laurentum, and remember laurentum is the city of King Latinus, and it makes sense that Virgil describes Faunus as the, the, um, the god of Laurentum because Faunus is not only an ancient Italian god, he is also, in Virgil's story, the father of King Latinus. So, having been saved from the... Uh, sorry, where, Ubi? Having been saved from the waves, they were accustomed to fasten gifts for or to the god of Laurentum and to um, to hang up, suspendere. Again, this is another infinitive after solebant, just like um, figere. So, and where they were accustomed to hang up their clothes, vestis. Now, this is accusative. In prose, it would be vestes. And um, the vestis are described with a PPP, votas, which means um, pledged. In other words, their clothes, which they had dedicated to the god. And this was something they did. You know, they arrived safely from their voyage and they took off the clothes that they had worn on the voyage, hung them on the tree, and as a kind of gift or offering to the to Faunus to say thank you for the safe arrival. Um, said, so said means but, um, the Teucrians, Teucri, or the Trojans, nullo discrimine, now that's an ablative phrase, with no um, discrimination. In other words, without um, separating out in their minds, you know, which trees are important and sacred, like this one, and which trees are not. So with no distinction or with no discrimination. Had removed sustulerant, that's pluperfect, from tolo. It could mean to lift up, but in this case it's because you're lifting up a tree, you're basically uprooting it or removing it. So they had removed the sacred uh, root, sacrum stirpem, so that, this is ut plus subjunctive, purpose clause, so that they would be able, possent, there's our imperfect subjunctive, so that they would be able to, literally to run together, concurrere, but the idea of that is to fight, it's like pugnare here, so that they would be able to fight on a puro campo. Now here, puros means um, unobstructed or open, and the and the campus is is a plain or a field. So that phrase means so that they would be able to fight on an open plain or an unobstructed plain or field. Um, and then hic again means here. So here, the spear hasta. Of Aeneas, Aeneai, genitive case, was standing, starbat, or you could say was sticking. In other words, it was stuck in the it was stuck in the roots of this wild olive tree. Um, and then hook means to here. So to here, it's impetus, it's force, it's uh, impetus in English. Had brought it, de tulerat, this is the pluperfect tense of de ferro which really has a, the same sort of meaning as normal ferro here. Um, so to here, its, its force had brought it, 
So illam means it, referring back to the hasta, the spear. That's why it's feminine. So to hear its force had carried it, and that's et, was holding it, tenevat, was holding it fixed, fixam, or was holding it fast, was holding it um, so that it was stuck. Um, and again, this is feminine referring back to the spear, uh, fixed in the lenta radica. So lenta here means resistant or tough, and radica is, um, is a root. Um, and this phrase is ablative, lenta radica, because um, it's, a, it's a kind of ablative of instrument, like the, the force was holding it fixed with the tough root, or you could just imagine that Virgil has missed out the word in here, so in lenta radica, in the resistant root, or in the tough root, something like that.